John here, guys, and today we're talking about the Multi GP Championships that is about to take place in just a couple of weeks. And notably, the track designs just dropped. You can go to the links below and go to the Multi GP YouTube page and check out both tracks that are going to be competed on for champs. If you have your invitation and you have accepted, you will be traveling to what I consider to be the biggest drone race of the year period DRL now has three multi gp champions on the cast for this year now guess what guys our favorite track designer neil nm grower is actually the track designer for nationals i just found this out a couple of days ago and i've been so anxious to get a look at what the track is and just seeing it just a few minutes ago i'm blown away it's just amazing to see the evolution um seeing tracks that are flown on other television shows even don't really compare and what's interesting guys is that five of the 12 pilots on drl this season have flown neil's tracks they've come all the way to houston from places all over the country fly his track so i've been extremely lucky just to happen to be in the same city as one of the best track designers in the world and it's really cool to see him finally get the nod and the opportunity to design the track of the year so let's go talk to neil the michelangelo of multi gb kates himself and see what he has to say so it's gonna be something that i ask like why did you design this bullshit? Yeah, exactly. okay so like yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. so how did it come about that you got the opportunity to well i've been offering my services to multi gp for quite some time um, and then been ignoring it. Yeah, yeah. At I.O., I submitted a, a track for a World Cup that was not accepted. And I was um, disheartened by that and shared that with the team who creates the tracks that I wanted to be a part of it. Then at I.O., the, the team who's in charge of the tracks were like, well, okay, if you really want to be a part of it, like, let's talk about nationals. As a pilot who is also a track designer, who could I recommend who I thought could do a really good job to, like, design the Nats track? And just said, well, I recommend myself. Like, <laughs> yeah. I really think yeah. that, like, that I could do that very well. Uh, and that's and uh, that's totally true because Neil has, like, you know, like to design a good track, you have to have a skill, and that's the skill you develop. And Neil developed this skill like last four years. It was almost exclusively Neil designing tracks for us. Yeah at least once a week like yeah. four years once a week like how many times is that it's like 200 tracks yeah well it's like yeah. at least yeah. minimum at least, minimum yeah, plus his sure. tracks in velocidron so and the, the way neil designed the track like i don't believe in like voting because it's really hard to appreciate the track every little moment when you even when you fly a couple of times in simulator it's really hard so neil's track you appreciate when you start flying it you realize how much like stuff he puts, how much thoughts he put in this track, and it's just yeah, it's just the skill you develop. And, well, and uh, like a lot of the guys have come down to train with you guys, yeah. and one of the number one reasons they say is the track is done. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, it's like tear to my eye. Uh, yeah. well, <laughs> no, yeah. but like yeah, yeah. yeah, like that, like uh, like that's minimum two hundred tracks designed by Neil last, like you know, like yeah, I I, I, I would estimate it's like like three times more than this minimum estimation. Yeah, sure. Like. And, and in no yeah. time, I don't think we've ever repeated a track. Yeah, like, we never, never repeated yeah, a track. We never repeated. Uh, and like, yeah, here we fly like sometimes four times a week, sometimes one time a week. Like an average maybe two times a week. Yeah. And yeah, that's a lot of tracks designed by Neil. Small ones, big ones, crazy ones. Like with tower, without tower. Here with, the, with all this concrete stuff, like with the trees, like all kind of tracks, like freaking every week uh, yeah. yeah and okay. also we we put some input for neil's tracks you know yeah. what we like yeah. what we don't we call it like professional track beaching yep and, and it's, uh, it's neil, neil takes all this beaching and uh, you know sometimes he he ignores it sometimes he doesn't but, <laughs> uh, but he takes it so yeah totally well and i think yeah. that you've helped over the time you've helped me develop some principles that yeah, we kind of don't even think yeah. about but like that there are certain rules that that i try to follow yeah. that you've helped me 
come up with over yeah, yeah i think it's good i think neil is just like the best track designer in the world i'm sorry like of all the tracks per year this is like the number one track and it's only once a year yeah uh and it's gonna be a big one this is be the biggest champs track that has ever been made now this year we're actually having two tracks for nationals neil designed track one but track two was designed by jim knee down snodgrass and i reached out for him to comment and he told me essentially our goals were to make something that would make an impression and be memorable while being hopefully relatively easy to learn for such a big track we wanted to use elements never seen in a multi-gp event i also didn't want any gotcha elements that pilots are scared to make it through unscathed each lap i pushed for the single lap qualifying for sport so that those pilots can celebrate a good lap without worrying that they have to do it twice in a row. Now, Jim does a lot of things to do with tracks and race decisions at MultiGP, especially this year. So it's pretty common for him to have a hand in tracks from either a design or review standpoint. Now, he operates the Quad Rivals group, and that spans all the way from North Carolina down through South Carolina and even Atlanta, one of the biggest racing chapters. If you can even call it a chapter at that size congratulations to him for getting the nod for the big track design this year as well and if you have velocity drone you can go on there too go to nemesis mode select the multi gp nationals 2021 track and then go rank yourself against me and every other pilot in the world even if you're not going to nationals you can fly the track and see how you would fare after 10 tries i put out 166 second time and man, this track is tough and long. It took me about seven tries before I actually had the track down. Um, so if you give yourself 10 tries, see how fast you can get. So what do you think in the comments, guys? Are you gonna be traveling to nationals? If so, let me know. Even if not, if you fly the track on Velocidrome, get yourself ranked in Nemesis mode, put yourself on the leaderboards, let me know what your time is. Did you beat my time? I can't wait to see the top racers in the world all travel to Florida in just a couple of weeks to compete. Will we have a repeat championship? Will Vanover, heads up, or Soren take one of the wins? Could it be a former champion like Night Fury? Or will it be one of these new fast guys like Leviathan, Hyper, Propsicle? All these guys are putting down tremendous times. Noiko's been up in the mix for the last few years. So like it's anyone's guess who's going to win this. This track is so large. It's going to be two laps only. That is a change. And this is a big thing. Now, some people the other day in the multi GP Facebook group were saying, is it unfair that a pilot is who is going to compete is designing the track? And I could see both sides to that argument. But let me just say this. Having attended many of those 500 events in the past several years, Neil just doesn't always win. Whether he's the track designer or not, uh, if there's somebody faster, they learn it. That edge of knowing the track better disappears after the first five packs or so. So in order to level the playing field, they are publishing the track so everybody can learn it two weeks ahead of time. So when you show up on the day of competition, your goal is to fly the track that you know as fast as possible. Now, some drone racers are saying that part of what they like about competition is showing them trying to learn the track on day one. And I could see pros and cons of that. I think that really gives the people with a better memory at advantage, not necessarily the better racers. I think having a track this size, this complex, you kind of do have to learn it ahead of time. Uh, or else you're just going to penalize people that don't have a memory. I know I'm not a top racer, but on some of the more complex tracks, it'll take me the entire day just to learn the track. And maybe I'll get two or three packs where I actually know the track at the very end. This way, everybody can put their full skill towards flying. So it's really cool seeing some of the elements over the years that we've kind of experimented with integrated into this new track. And one of the things that I really like to see on a big stage is a track that has a great flow. You know, the, when there's a lot of disjointed back and forth, you know, you want to see the really top pilots come up with an amazing line that just looks like one single line through an entire magnificent, gigantic course. And that's what we're going to see in just a couple of weeks. So I can't wait to see the broadcast of this thing going down live. I can't wait to see who comes out on top. 
and um, it's really exciting to have a track designed by what I consider to be uh, the best track designer in the world. That part is really exciting. Props to all of the folks over at MultiGP really collaborating with the community on these. I think everybody's gonna really enjoy it. That's for sure. Ooh, we'll see, awesome. we'll see you at Chance. Congrats. Yeah.